Ladies and gentlemen, it is our great pleasure to welcome our special guest, Liz Sheridan. Liz Sheridan is an actress who has been in a variety of films and television series. She joins us to talk about her life in the arts and her book, Busy and Jimmy. It's a great pleasure to welcome Liz Sheridan. It's absolutely wonderful. I mean, I'm, this is exciting. Oh, well, thank you. My first question, this can sometimes trip people up a little bit. It's a very simple question. Who is Liz Sheridan? <laughs> Are you sitting down? <laughs> Actually, as a matter of fact, I'm standing up. Oh. <laughs> I was born in New York City. My father was a famous concert pianist named Frank Sheridan. My mother was a concert singer. I stayed at this very famous rehearsal club, which is for artists, women. And, and somebody brought Jimmy home one day to our living room in our place. We started talking, and we became friends, and then we went out for dinner a couple of times and got to be friendlier and friendlier, and finally we decided to live together, so we did. It was wonderful. And just so all the listeners out there can be clear, the Jimmy you're talking about, you knew him before he was James Dean. Yes. To you, he was Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't, he, he didn't go through the, the portals of fame right at that moment, no. I want you to take us back a little bit and tell us, what was life like growing up in the Sheridan home? Well, my mother and father were separated when they were very young, and my sister and I lived in Westchester County with my mom. It was lovely, and my father would visit every Sunday and take us out for a meal or something. And then when I moved to New York, that was exciting, too. I was born in New York City, so I was very familiar with it. But the rehearsal club was a great place to be, and someone brought Jimmy home one day to our sort of stately parlor. <laughs> we weren't allowed to have gentlemen callers upstairs or anything because that's where everybody was upstairs. We got to be friends. Then we got to be even better friends. And then we decided to live together, which is sort of didn't do it in those days. That's one of the things in the book that, to some people, it may be interesting to know that in those times, like when you had moved to New York City, the book says that that was a rule, no gentleman on, I think you said the third floor? No. You mean in the rehearsal club? Yeah, there was a, a no gentleman rule. Uh, no gentleman rule to any of the going up the stairs where all the girls were. It was like a no, no brownstone, very, had about three floors, I think. No, we weren't allowed to, to have visitors upstairs, gentlemen, just in the parlor in the front living room downstairs. And at this time, your passion in life was dance. So yes. how did you discover dance? I know that with Frank Sheridan being a pianist and Elizabeth Poole Jones being a singer, there had to have been a lot of music around the house. Always, always. I was part of a group uh, that was in Westchester County, a dance troupe. I was dancing all the time, and my mother was dying for me to go to college. Where it was, there was just a lot of dance. I don't know. I spent a lot of time on Broadway, dancing uh, in some really, really good shows. Could you remember a favorite show that you were in? Mm, probably Ballroom by Michael Bennett, I think. Is the one that directed, I should, should be more informative, I saw. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. So tell me, you know, you mentioned that your father was a, a pianist and your mother was a singer. Can you remember favorite music around the house or favorite songs growing up? Oh, boy, there were so many of them. Well, we didn't really grow up with my father. They had separated very young, but my mother sang a lot. She sang a lot of Irish songs. She was Irish, English. Scotch and Welsh, and she was very, she had some beautiful, lovely tunes that she sang all the time, and then she, she did several concerts with my father, and they even toured Europe by doing a lot of songs, and he was playing, and she would sing. And you decided to write this book, and the title of it is Dizzy and Jimmy. 
Yes. And this is a book about your experience to moving to New York City and the, the romantic, the, the love that you and James Dean had. What made you decide that it should be a book, that you should write it? What a good question. Well, my husband was alive at the time, and he thought that it, that would be a really swell idea because everybody was interested in the fact that I knew Jimmy so well. So I got in touch with Harper Collins. They said it was their favorite book, and they, uh, they put it out. I published it. In my personal opinion, I just loved the book. Yesterday, I was giving a friend of mine, his name is Kyle, a ride, and he started reading the first page, and he tried to take the book from me. <laughs> he said, I I'm hooked from the first page. He said, I have to read this. And That's so sweet. That's nice. <laughs> and yeah. I I told him, you can't borrow the book because the last time I lent you a book, you didn't give it back to me. <laughs> <laughs> As I read the book, I felt like it would make a great film. Yes, I agree. Is there any chance that one day this will be a movie? Oh, God, I hope so. That's what I've been trying to do. Is just when I came back out here again, everybody that I knew in the studios had either retired or died or... I'm sorry, <laughs> that's not very well, but... So it's a question of finding. Now, I have a friend who has been writing the script for me. It's over half done. It's wonderful. And I have a couple of people, maybe, who might be interested in, in directing, but they're, they're not huge, famous people. It's going to take a while to, to try and figure it out. Now, tell me, when you moved out to New York City to pursue a career in, as they say, show business, dancing, all that stuff. When you moved out there, were you optimistic? Yes, because I was uh, with very good people and in very good shows, and, and I was a good dancer. Well, I was at a show called Ballroom, and it was directed by Michael Bennett, who was director who did the, what is the show about the, the kids all the way across the stage? Very famous. Oh, anyway, he directed that. And I was in a lot of shows. When you look back at your career and all the television shows and the movies you did, is there one that's a favorite? Gee whiz. There were so many greats, like the, t the Seinfeld program. That was just a fantastic show. Yes, it was. And it was, I loved doing it, and I loved the people there, and I loved Jerry. He's terrific. And then I did Alf. I remember that one? Yep. And I loved doing that, too. That was Four years, Heinfeld was nine years. Before that, I was at Julius Monk's Plaza Nine in New York City, where everybody who was anybody would go and watch us perform on stage. It's very la di da. And then before that, <laughs> well, at, Jimmy and I kind of went our own ways because he was asked out here to Hollywood, and I didn't want to go and follow him. So I went down to the Virgin Islands which an ex-roommate of mine had gotten a divorce down in St. Thomas. And I went down there, and I got a job. And I was singing and playing the piano in almost every bar and saloon in the, the West Indies. I really liked that part of the book. And I liked that you mentioned that you heard all that Calypso music. Yes. The Mighty Sparrow and the Duke of Iron. The Duke of Iron. Yep. <laughs> and I think it said that you sang that song, Mary Ann? All day, all night, Miss Mary Ann, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I love Calypso music, and I like you painted a really good picture of what it must have been like to perform in the Caribbean at that time. Oh, it was wonderful. I loved it. What is the best thing about being Liz Sheridan? I think I'm an honest person, and that goes a long way with me. I think I'm an extremely talented person in almost every direction, like my family was, and that makes me happy. I think that's a, a great virtue, just to say that you've been honest. I can admire that. Yes. Yes, it is. And I'm fair and honest and, you know, talented and, <laughs> <laughs> and I've been around. Strangely enough, the only place I really don't want to go is Europe. I went down the other way. And I just don't want to sightsee. Not Europe, though. No. I don't know why. I've just never been a sightseer. Well, since you've gotten to visit a lot of places throughout your career, what has been your favorite place? My favorite place to visit, you're saying? 
Yeah, to visit or to work. There's been a lot of them. Puerto yeah. Rico. Well, I loved working on Broadway, and I loved working at Julius Monk, Plaza Nine, and I loved singing in some of the bars and saloons all over the West Indies. <laughs> that was fun. I don't love television. It, it's fun. It's just a long, long, dreary week. <laughs> <laughs> I've had two really good shows, so I'm very lucky. Something that you have that I think is really great is you have a website, lizsheridan.info, and that's kind of how we became acquainted. And it's a great way that your fans can stay in, in touch with you and see what you're doing. So I wanted to tell everybody that they, if they like, they can visit lizsheridan.info for more info. Well, it's T-Z-Z-Y-A-N-N-410 at AOL.com. Or they can email. And I also wanted to ask you two final questions. One of them is a little lighthearted. What is your all-time favorite meal? When I was little, I didn't eat, I didn't like veal, and I didn't like a lot of meats. But a good pizza is hard to find. <laughs> I guess you can't get them out in California like they had in New York. Well, <laughs> no, not really. I mean, yes and no. <laughs> and I have a favorite place that I go because I know everybody there, and it's right around the corner, and it, I usually have my lunch there. And, and the owner is a wonderful cook. Chef ever. What's the name of the restaurant? It's called The Outtake. The Outtake. Well, I have one final question for our special guest, Liz Sheridan. We have listeners all over the place. And so my last question is totally open-ended. What would you like to say to all the people who are listening in? Well, if you are listening in, I'm flattered. Flattered as hell, I really am. If you are looking to find the life that you really want, then you should do it. You should not sit on the porch and just rock and grow old. You should go out there and follow your heart. And I think that's terribly important. Play the piano. <laughs> <laughs> well, Miss Sheridan, it's been a great pleasure to interview you. Thank you oh, so much for you. joining us. Thank you very much. It's been fun. All right, Miss Sheridan, I wish you a good evening. And you too.